A lot of parents subscribe to this channel, but sometimes teenagers find it because they're trying to figure out how to get their video games back from their parents. I can help you with that. I think there's two good reasons to watch this video, and either you're trying to figure out how to get your video games back from your parents, at which point, welcome, I've got your back, I'm gonna help you out with this, or you're a parent trying to help your kids figure out why this has happened in the first place and what they can do about it. So that brings me to the first point. Think about what happened just before you lost track of your video games. I don't know exactly what the story is for you, but usually parents become restrictive when they think for some reason that kids are being immature about something. Let's talk for a minute about what maturity is and how you might be able to impact that. Now this is something that I have found is an important part of understanding parent psychology. Parents are not that hard to figure out. It basically comes down to three stages that they're constantly looking for and trying to identify with their kids. Now what do I mean by stage? Maturity sometimes is all about age. You know how old you are. But when I talk about maturity, it's all about stage. And there's only three that you need to be aware of. Stage one is the least mature stage. Stage one is characterized by selfishness, being all self-centered. It's all about me, me, me. It's what I want and I'm gonna get what I want and I don't care who I have to run over to get to it. Now, I know you're not like that, but some people are and that is very immature. Stage two is where we move from being demanding and fighting and yelling and screaming into a much more mature willingness to cooperate. At stage two, you don't want any trouble. You want to keep the peace. So at stage two, you're willing to negotiate. You're willing to work with people. You want to come up with some kind of a win-win solution, right? That's stage two. And when kids are on stage two, parents start to back off a little bit. There's one more stage, and that's the most mature stage of them all. Stage three is where we are responsible. Stage three is about morals and values and ethics. It's about understanding all of the right reasons to do something. At stage three, you do the right things for the right reasons. And this requires a lot of maturity. Immature people don't even try this. Now notice, as we talk about these stages, it's about stage, not age. And you might be thinking, you know what? I'm 15 years old. My parents should let me use those video games anytime I want to. Okay, fair enough. At 15, you should be mature enough to handle that, right? But here's the thing. It's not just about how mature you are. It's about how mature your parents think you are. And that can be a whole different story. Now, why would your parents ever think that you're being less mature? Because I guarantee, and this is part of the parent psychology I promised to share with you. I guarantee when parents think you are less mature, stage one, for example, instead of stage three or even stage two, they will get all control freakish on you. They will. They'll try to control and manipulate and, and dictate everything that's going on. If they think that you're more mature, that's when parents start to back off and let go of the control. So let's go back for a minute to the question I asked you right up front. What happened just before the video games disappeared. And I guarantee if you really think about that, something happened that had the parents thinking that you were being less mature. And it might have been some yelling. It might have been some arguing. It might have been some kind of a conflict that came up. 
where it triggered in their mind that you were being immature. Am I right about that? Check it out and see if I am. Usually what happens just before you lose the access is something that your parents are thinking you've been immature about. Even if you're not, even if you're really mature, but they can't tell because something happened that had them thinking that you were less mature. That's important. How are we gonna get our video games back? By doing stage three. Now this means that you get to take initiative, you get to be responsible, you get to do the right things for the right reasons. Not because your parents told you to, not because you're just trying to get your video games back. Because if your parents see you taking initiative, for example, in fact, let's work on that one for just a minute. What if you were to go into the kitchen right now? If you were to go into your kitchen, what would you notice? In the average American home, there are dishes waiting for some kind of attention. Either they need to be taken from the dishwasher and put in the cupboards, or they need to be taken from the sink and put in the dishwasher. Something usually needs to happen with the dishes, right? Maybe you don't have a dishwasher. My mom always used to say, why do I need a dishwasher? I got six because I have five siblings. Do the math, right? But just check it out. Something needs to happen in your kitchen right now. What would happen if you just went in there without being asked and take care of whatever needs to happen? Now you might be thinking, well, it's not my turn. It's not my job. It's, oh, I don't wanna do that. It's hard, it's work, whatever. Whatever's going through your mind, just set that aside for just a minute. And here's the question. If you were to do that, without being asked. What would your parents think about your level of maturity? That you're being more mature or that you're being less mature? Do you see that? If they think you're being more mature, they're going to back off from the control and allow you to have more. I have already given you enough to get those video games back. It's going to happen. Now, it doesn't happen overnight. It doesn't happen immediately because if your parents think that you're just doing this to get your games back, are they going to think that you're being more mature or less mature? Parent psychology. You gotta think like a parent. If they think you're just doing it to get your games back, they're gonna think that you're being less mature. So you gotta commit to the bit, all right? You gotta do this for a couple of days you got to get it into your practice. And here's a couple of ways that you can do that. Let's practice respect. Now there's three elements of that respect that I wanted to mention to you. And it has to do with having a respectful voice, a respectful face, and a respectful body position. When you interact with your parents, trust me, I know parents, this is parent psychology. When your voice is respectful, and don't pick any words that would embarrass your parents in front of their friends, you use respectful language and tone of voice with your parents, talk to them in a calm, respectful way. That's gonna get you a lot of mileage, especially when you're upset, especially then, because it takes a lot more maturity to be respectful when you're upset. Voice face, take a moment and look in the mirror, all right? With the face that you currently have, just see what you notice. Now, if your eyebrows are down like this and you get all these crinkles right here in the middle of your face, probably your parents are gonna think something about your attitude. So loosen up your eyebrows, raise your eyebrows a little bit. Let's get those wrinkles out from between as much as you can. Open your eyes up a little bit, chin up, okay? Show them a face that is confident and peaceful and respectful. That's gonna go a long way, trust me. And then body position. Do you notice a different energy here than here? Yeah, you do. You don't have to take a class in body language to figure this out. Open up your body, okay? Turn toward your parents, not away from them when you're talking to them. All of these things are gonna help them to think that you're being more mature. Trust me, this is gonna work great. You got time for one more tip because this one is absolutely powerful and it's something that I've tried to train adults to do, but sometimes teenagers get this even before the adults do. Here's the point. 
produce more than you consume. Produce more than you consume. What does that even mean? You constantly are consuming. Like when you breathe air, you're consuming oxygen. When you eat, you're consuming food. When you drive a car, you're consuming fuel. That's what consumption is all about. Production is making things, creating things, bringing things to the table that weren't there before. I want you to think about producing more than you consume. I've talked to a lot of parents. Parents get frustrated sometimes with their teenagers because they feel like they're constantly just laying around and doing nothing. I get people asking me all the time, how do I motivate my lazy teenager? Well, you guys aren't lazy. You're just really efficient, right? And if you don't have to work hard to get something, then why would you? But you're fully capable of it. Now, you're laying around the house, playing your video games, eating your parents' food. All right, you get the picture? This is all consumption. You're consuming things. Even a video game is consuming entertainment. You with me? So the point that I made was to produce more than you consume. What are you doing to produce value for your parents? Now, you don't owe them anything. That's not what I'm saying. If you show them, however, that you realize the abundance that they're providing for you and you're doing everything that you can to contribute, to produce, to create value for them, that's going to go a long way. Look at a typical day, for example. When you get up in the morning and you take a shower, you eat some breakfast, you turn on your lights or your music or your games, you're consuming in all of these activities. What are you doing to produce? Ask yourself that question and find some productive ways to reach out and improve the lives of your parents. This is going to get you a lot of mileage. I promise. I know parents. I'm a psychologist. This is parent psychology. Let me know how it goes. I'm here for you. I've got your back. And there's a lot of resources where these came from. Let's see if we can get your parents enrolled. Let's see if we can get teens enrolled in working together. We can do that at Live On Purpose Central. There's a link in the description. Go down and click that link so that we can have a conversation together about other ideas and resources to help you out with this. Her head was down, face locked.